Hey there, it's Christine with This Girl Hikes, and in this video, I'm gonna go over with you my winter hiking gear. So this is a day hike out in winter conditions, and it covers the 10 essentials. I'm gonna go over some special considerations that you'll want to make for those 10 essentials given the winter environment, and also a few extras that you should carry to be prepared as well. Jumping straight into it, let's list what the 10 essentials are. We're going to need navigation, headlamp, sun protection, first aid, knife, fire, shelter, extra food, extra water, and extra clothes. In addition to those 10 items, there's about five other items that we're going to talk about that you may want to have with you as well. Using a phone app such as Gaia or All Trails can be a very effective tool for navigation. Something to be cautious of though is that in sub-freezing temperatures, your batteries can be very fickle. It does not take long exposure to sub-freezing temperatures before your battery may deplete or freeze, rendering your device useless. To mitigate this, Keep your device close to your body to utilize your body warmth to keep it from freezing or in close proximity to a hand warmer and that should help it from freezing too. You may also want to carry a backup battery bank and a charging cable to help recharge your device if that is something that needs to happen while you're in the field. However, it is advisable to carry a paper map, a compass, and the skills to use them to help you in the event that your devices do not work. Winter can be a really good time to learn or brush up on these skills since you might be getting out less than you are in summer. Learn the basics and then when the temperatures are a little bit nicer, put it into practical use in the field to make sure that you really have a good understanding of how to use those skills and then next winter you'll be ready to go. Although I do not use my Garmin InReach Mini as my primary navigation device, there are some navigational tools on here that can be helpful, such as my altimeter. However, I primarily just use this as its two-way satellite communication capabilities allow me to check in with family members back home should my plans change and also to summon help in the event of an emergency. Shorter days in the winter mean that having a headlamp is even more crucial than it is in the summer. This is a piece of gear that I carry with me in my kit year round anytime I head out. My headlamp is rechargeable so I will also carry its cable and a battery bank to recharge it in the event that I need to. If you don't have a rechargeable one, then having a spare pair of batteries would be advisable. You may not naturally associate the need for sun protection with outdoor winter activities, but it's actually as equally important in winter as it is in summer. Protecting your skin from UV rays is helpful for your immediate comfort, but also your long-term health. So using something such as the mineral sunscreen to uh, protect any exposed areas of skin, specifically if you are spending time in alpine environments or if you're traveling across snow for a long period of time, something like your face or any areas even that the sun can reflect off of, bounce back up onto. So even if you have a hat on, put on some sunscreen to protect your skin. And then also sunglasses are gonna be really important too. I like to use a pair of polarized sunglasses. Uh, they help with the light that's reflecting up off the snow and can help with eye fatigue and also prevent snow blindness. So don't forget these items, they're not just for summer only. I've always got my first aid kit in my pack. I find that purchasing a commercial first aid kit and making a couple of tweaks for my specific needs is really helpful. In the winter time, I like to make sure that I'm carrying like a hand warmer or two in here just in case things go sideways. I have it sort of as a backup, although it's not something that I use as standard. And then I also always carry with me a knife and that goes for the winter as well. 
In the event that you're lost or injured and it becomes necessary to spend the night outside overnight in cold temperatures, having the ability to start a fire for warmth and to melt snow for water becomes essential. It's advisable to carry with you a lighter and or waterproof matches to help you with that. If your route is going to um, carry you through wooded terrain, it could be helpful to bring with you cotton balls soaked in petroleum jelly as a fire starter or even some of those little fire starter bricks that they sell on the market ready to go could be really helpful as well. If your route is going to be above tree line or even for the sake of convenience, bringing with you a backpacking stove to have the ability to melt snow into water is really helpful. It's also a really nice just comfort item so you can have a warm meal midday or make yourself a little coffee or tea um, just to have something warm to drink while you're taking a break. Also, part of your 10 essentials, you're going to want to have additional warm layers. So this is going to vary depending on your cold tolerance and also how cold it is. But definitely, if you're wearing your thickest layer while moving your warmest layers, then that's not warm enough. You need to bring extra. Um, so I've got a hat. I've got a couple pairs of gloves. I've got puffy mid layer and I've got hard shell layers. Not going to spend a whole lot of time going over a winter layering system because I have a whole separate video that talks about the ins and outs of what you need to be doing to be properly layering in the winter in order to stay warm. So I'm going to link that video for you to check out if you're interested in the whole breakdown of that. Moving right along to shelter, you need to have the ability to stay out overnight and shelter yourself from potentially severe winter conditions. I know a lot of us might go hiking in the summertime and we have those summer storms kind of roll in. I know through the western US that kind of tends to happen where these thunderstorms will roll in and yeah, it might get cold and hail and stuff for a little bit and you kind of shelter for a few minutes and then the storm rolls out, but winter weather systems are different. A lot of times in the winter, if a storm system moves in, that system kind of settles in and stays for a while. You could be faced with whiteout conditions or just a situation where it's unsafe to move or somebody becomes injured. And so what does this mean for you sheltering for overnight? An ideal emergency shelter will be a small bivy or even something like what I have here. But a lot of hikers, this is going to be overkill. So if this is too much for you, then I am going to suggest getting something like this is a, um, a sleeping bag. <laughs> it's made out of um, solar material and it has a little bit of insulation. And you would couple this with, say, a large heavy-duty uh, trash bag or two to add some water resistance. At the bare minimum, this is the kind of system that you should be carrying. I actually have this right here. This is called a Bothy bag, and it um, deploys really quickly. It's rather lightweight, and it's reusable. You sit down, you pull it around you, and that's going to keep you dry and warmer than being exposed to the environment. Having with you something like that bothy bag, a bivy, or even a tarp to help break up some of the wind and keep you dry can be really, really helpful in keeping you safer if you do have to weather a storm out in the winter mountains. Also carrying with you something such as a sit pad like this, somewhere where you can come up off the ground and feel a little bit Warmer can be really helpful too. This is really lightweight and quite small, so it's kind of just a nice thing to have during breaks for comfort, but also is a good tool to use in the event of emergencies. 
Okay, extra food and extra water. I'm gonna tackle these two together because staying nourished and hydrated are essential in working towards your body's ability to keep you warm. If you get dehydrated, all of those expensive insulative layers that you're wearing are really not gonna do a whole lot. Like your body needs to be producing heat and it needs to be nourished and hydrated in order to do that. So even though you do not feel like drinking out there in those cold winter environments, it's super important that you do that. And so a couple of things that you might want to consider are, one, if you're somebody that typically uses a hydration bladder with a hose, just know that those hoses are prone to freezing quite easily in the you know sub-freezing temperatures. So either get one that's um, insulated or switch to something like a Nalgene. Um, I've even been in temperatures where it's been necessary to keep my water bottle in my jacket and closer to my body to keep it from freezing. So that's something that you want to keep in mind as well. Also, another option would be to carry like an insulated thermos with a warm beverage such as a tea in it. That can be a little bit more tempting to sip on as you're going. That way it's helping you stay hydrated and it's giving you that added benefit of staying a little bit warmer as well. In terms of food, having a backpacking stove and be able, being able to make a warm meal is something that can be a little bit more appetizing. If that's not really your style and you like to eat on the go, that's great. Try to make sure that you're grabbing options that are not going to completely harden beyond any sort of ability to eat without cracking teeth once they freeze. Um, or remember to keep the snack that you're going to eat next kind of in your your jacket or close to your body so your body can help keep that warm. Um, and then kind of when you eat through that, maybe grab the next thing out of your pack and pull that close to your body so you kind of have one on deck always. Now that we've talked about the 10 essentials and their special considerations for winter, I wanna to just touch on a few pieces of gear that are not necessarily part of the 10 essentials, but I would highly recommend you having. Um, this right here is my toileting kit. You know, your body has the same needs in the winter as it does in the summer, and actually you're going to handle that in the same way as well. You're gonna pack it in and pack it out, and you're gonna dig a cat hole through the snow down into the ground. So you are definitely probably going to wanna have a shovel with you to help you with that process as well if that's something that you think you're going to need out in the field and even if you don't think you're going to need it it's a good thing to have just in case so that we can all be responsible stewards of the environment in terms of moving through the train in winter i'm not going to go over really any technical pieces in this video it's not really aimed at that purpose but having micro spikes or some kind of other traction device is advisable. I talked about this before, I will say it again. If you are moving on like a trail environment or even off trail, if you're not on a city sidewalk, having micro spikes with the actual spikes and actual metal chains are going to win time after time in comparison to something with like the coil system. Those little lightweight coil systems work great if you are um, scraping ice off the windshield of your car in your driveway and it's a little icy. <laughs> if you're moving through um, backcountry terrain, you're gonna need something a little bit more aggressive. I like these Cthulhu micro spikes. I've had them for a number of years and they're still in great condition and I've used them a whole lot. Something else that can help you with stability is having a pair of trekking poles. I get a lot of comments in my videos, people advising that I use trekking poles. I typically carry trekking poles. I do not use them that often because I'm usually carrying a tripod, but I would suggest to you that um, using trekking poles can definitely help in icy conditions or conditions where there's a lot of snow and it's gonna be a little bit harder to stay balanced and also consider that snow 
is covering something and you don't always have a good idea of what's under it. Sometimes you're moving through like a boulder field or a rocky area or maybe a stream crossing or something like that and having a trekking pole that you can kind of stick out in front of you and see what that does when it hits the snow can really help you kind of from punching through and getting stuck through you know between a couple of rocks and it can just prevent an injury so you may want to consider having these with you as well so what do i carry all of this in well i've been using my summer backpacking pack actually this is a 40 liter pack it is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 2400. Um, that's what I've been using for my day hikes in the winter because I have much larger volume of things with me on my winter day hikes than I do in the summer. In the summer I can easily get away with like a 24 liter pack and have all of my 10 essentials. But because I'm bringing the extra layers for winter, because I'm bringing the bothy bag and the backpacking stove with me. I want to make sure that I have uh, a pack that's going to accommodate all of that really well. So even when I'm out during the winter, I'm going to be carrying um, a, a larger pack than you would definitely see in the summertime. Something that you might also want to have is a whistle. I wanted to show you that my pack has a whistle built into it. Um, if yours doesn't, then uh, having one with you can also be really helpful and signaling for help in the event that you need to and then uh, let me see was there anything else oh yeah a couple of other items that you might want to have with you are a dry bag or a couple of dry bags last thing you want is for your insulative layers to all get soaking wet if there's sort of like a wet snow going on or rain so having um, either a waterproof backpack or even in addition to that having dry bags if you don't have the sort of more expensive fancy Cuban fiber or Dyneema dry bags then putting it in like Ziploc bags or even a trash bag and, and sealing that up can be just as effective but we just want to make sure that we're not getting moisture into our items that are designed to keep us safe. Uh, so consider that for your winter kit. And then the last item that you may want to consider having, depending on what it is that you're looking to do, is actually um, upping your eyewear game and maybe going something with like a ski goggle or something that can protect your eyes a little bit better than just sunglasses. Uh, if it's windy and it's picking up some faceted snow and just kind of Pushing it into your face, you can easily become blind and disoriented um, with even just a pair of sunglasses. So something that you may want to consider into your kit as well. Of course, having all of the gear is essential, but also having the skills and the know-how is just as important. I feel like it's something that we don't talk about as often because it's easier just to buy stuff than it is to learn things. But, you know, brushing up on your skills, reading about what it is like to be out in the winter environment, maybe signing up for a guided course or two to learn those skills can be really helpful. It's something that I've done in the past and I would highly recommend to anybody that's looking to, you know, extend their seasons in the mountains to just invest in yourself and your knowledge because, you know, some of these items are a fad and in a couple of years there's going to be something better that replaces it. But having good old-fashioned knowledge and know-how is invaluable. So, consider making the investment in yourself as well. Whenever I do a video like this, it seems like I've always forgotten something. <laughs> so if I have, leave me a comment <laughs> and it will be helpful to everyone. Um, I think I have everything, but you never know. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. And I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.